Dodgers. Let's talk about the Dodgers. I think let's do that. Let's 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 add some breaking news about the Dodgers right now, though. First, (laughs) yes, which is terrible. Gavin Lux has a torn ACL. Ah, Just came out, so that's expected to be out for the year. Did you see? Um, so we're on YouTube and, and, and we're using this new program and producer <laughs> Brian just put a breaking yeah. news Chiron up. That's, you got to put developing situation. That, that that's, is, that's my new favorite one, but we've got yeah, like a, that is, that's awful. That's, I mean, yeah, in all seriousness, that is a brutal, brutal, brutal injury for them. Tough for Gavin Lux. Too. I was, mean, just for, for the, for the player. I mean, he, I thought like he had a really nice year last year. You could see him improve. Right. You yeah. see him figuring things out. And yeah. like, you know, I, I've seen him references like, you know, what the hype was compared to what he may be like. They might not ever line up, but this is still an above average offensive player in the major leagues last year. And obviously um, the Dodgers thought well enough of him to entrust him with that position to go play shortstop. Um, but yeah, now they're going to have to go to their backup plan because he's out for the year, which is terrible. If Gavin Lux is your prospect disappointment, then you got to shut up, man, because that, <laughs> he's good. He's, he's a good, good player. Yeah. He's yeah. a good player. And he, so, okay, he wasn't an MVP candidate right away, but man, like he's a good player. That sucks. I cannot stand, especially when it's a young player, just, mm-hmm. and he's ready to, you know, he's coming into this season with, uh, he's full of beans. Because he knows that he's going to have an everyday position. He's not going to be uh, platooned or moved around. You know, he's not going to be screwing around in the outfield and stuff like that. The Dodgers, look, they they still they have depth. They, I still am picking them to win the West, even without Gavin Lux. I still think that someone's going to come up, whether it's Diego Cartaya or uh, uh, Bobby Miller or Ryan Pepio. Uh, someone's just going to like show up and be, Oh, hello. I'm great. Like all of a sudden one second, I'm not thinking about Walker Bueller and the next second it's Walker Bueller is a badass. Mm -hmm. And the Dodgers are the kind of team that when Walker Bueller gets hurt, they still have, I don't know if it's the best ERA in like 50 years since 1968, but they had one of the best team ERAs ever without Walker Bueller. Without Trevor Bauer, they're just just going through pitchers and oh well, yeah, we're just gonna weaponize Brett Anderson, you know? Oh yeah, that's that's fine. Andrew Haney, yeah, he's he's great now. By the way, they're gonna keep doing that, and I, that's the secret of the Dodgers. They are trusting in that because they did not have the most aggressive off season. I don't know if they're preparing for a big Otani push. I don't know what uh, the issue is there, but they have the ability to make players better and do it consistently and reliably. They have a great eye for talent. And so right now on the fan graphs depth chart, you have Miguel Rojas at shortstop. Uh, you just got an, an extension. Uh, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. You know, I, I think they'll make him better. I think they'll make him better than they, they thought that they were going to get from the Marlins. So, Well, I mean, he's been a steady major leaguer, yeah. you know, in a place where it's easy to kind of lose track of him. So, you know, it, been a, a leader in their clubhouse too by the way in miami hmm. um so yeah like that's you could do worse than for that to be your backup plan to gavin lux being hurt um you know to your point grant about them being so good at, at finding these talented players and bringing bringing the most out of them boy i am really really intrigued by what they do with noah Syndergaard mm, over yeah. there because you're, you're talking about a person who has gone through Tommy John, um, had the requisite struggles after it physically. And when I say struggles, not even necessarily results or whatever, but more like you're just not all the way back, right? You hear pitchers say it all the time. It takes a second. It takes a minute for your body to feel like you're all the way back to what it had been. Now, <clears throat> with that surgery, a lot of guys get there, fortunately, right? Noah Syndergaard gets there. Look out. Look out. Because this is somebody who... You know, there's a lot of shtick with Noah Syndergaard, right? In New York, especially, like, big, tall guy, like, the whole nickname, which I've always hated. Like, it's sort of so dorky, Thor, (laughs) right? Like, but what gets lost in all of that flash and bang showy stuff with him is that it's a smart pitcher who I think understands pitching at an advanced level more, more than he probably got credit for, again, because it was very easy to see all the other stuff. Um, 
So this is a guy who I think he took less money to go there to Los Angeles. Again, in deference to what you talked about, Grant, like the track record these guys have for bringing the best out of some players that you know uh, are coming there because of you know maybe they they had bad results, they've been hurt, whatever. He's a prime person for that, except he's got more raw tools than just about anyone. This guy, I mean, I watched him in the same game once hit a home run that went 430 feet, and he also hit 101 on the gun, like in, <laughs> in, in like a seven inning start in which he gave up like two hits or something. It was just like, holy cow. And like, does he ever have to get back there again? No, he probably won't. But if he gets anywhere close to that, he's already just on raw tools like so so much further ahead of a lot of guys. So to see him end up with the Dodgers with their track record for being able to extract performance from people with less stuff, by the way, mm-hmm. that's super intriguing and could be uh, huge for them when you look at the rest of the rotation. First comment, if you don't like the nickname Thor, don't be 6'6 with blonde flowing locks. <laughs> <laughs> like that, I have no sympathy for a six six dude with blonde flowing locks. Like, oh, why are they calling me Thor? I no, he just... liked it. I think oh, he okay. leaned into. It. I didn't. I just always thought oh. it was just like, oh god, this it's is just, so forced. You know, it's so much cleaner than uh, the guy at the end of Adventures and Babysitting. Like, if you're an '80s movie head, <laughs> <laughs> who are my people at? All right, no, but seriously, it, it, I heard reports that his velocity's uh, looking good this spring, and that sets off warning klaxons to me. It, all of a sudden, you're talking about if this guy's throwing heat again, like you said, he's got better command than people give him credit mm-hmm. for. He's got his smarts. He's a he's a good pitcher, like not just a good thrower. He's a good pitcher. And if he's throwing a little bit of heat again, I cannot remember who it was that told me that when they came back from Tommy John surgery, that it felt like they were pitching with someone else's arm. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's not necessarily the case with everyone else. Everyone's timetable is different. But there's someone that said, I feel like I'm pitching with someone else's arm. And that stuck with me because mm-hmm. not everyone's going to recover at the same rate. Not everyone's going to feel the same comfortability in their first year back. So, yeah, I that is a great point that he's someone to watch. He's someone to watch. 